good evening and welcome to this video. So, I have to declare defeat and I will show you why. We are now currently approaching the hut of our neighbor. Uh, here it is. And uh, our neighbor asked me for help because he has lost the keys uh, for this lock here. It's actually not, not a problem of getting access to this little house because uh, the door was unlocked all the time. But he wanted to replace the uh, the euro cylinder and he wanted to yeah get the door uh, being able to to lock it up and so he wanted to replace the the cylinder but to get the cylinder out of the door you need to uh, turn the plug a little bit because if it's in the uh, locked position the the cam uh, stands at an angle and prevents the plug from being pulled out and yeah so he wasn't able to get out the euro cylinder and ask me for help. Yeah, and I was really uh, happy that I could try my uh, lock picking skills in real life. But I also became really frustrated when I uh, had no success after more than one hour. And it was uh, getting cold and dark and yeah, I was really frustrated. So I told him I would I would try next day again. But then I, I realized um, that I have another chance. So you can see the cylinder here is um, a very wide standing out of the door and I tried the, the snapping attack. So I, I used <coughs> my little uh, vise here, um, opened the jaws and clamped it really tight and jiggled it, um, you can see jiggled it left and right and up and down and very quickly this lock came apart so as you probably know the weak point of the euro cylinders is exactly there at this point where the, the screw is um, uh, where the location for the screw is and now we can have a look inside let's see if I can do that for you here you can have a look inside and you can see the cam that prevents the lock from being pulled out and you can see the remaining part of the um, threading okay so I think my neighbor will be really happy when I tell him about this type of access uh, of success and now I will uh, remove the the, the other part here, the outside part and of course uh, yeah, I will take both parts to the lock lab <laughs> to my uh, nice lock lab um, upstairs where it's warm and uh, very comfortable and I will try to pick it open and yeah, then we will have a look at the bidding and at the pins okay back in the warm lock lab here you can see all the parts yeah, the, the screw has been deformed a little bit from my snapping attack that's the cam and the actuator. That's the inside part. No, that's the that's the outside part. And here is the inside part that looked outside from the flat surface of the door, so that I could grab it with my little vise and um, bend it. Uh, you can see the marks here. And it's really easy to snap these locks if um, the euro lock looks stands outside from the from the flat surface of the door more than three millimeters. Um, so and there are actually special tools um, that are designed for for snapping euro locks. Some of the more expensive ones have a steel rod inserts, so that will prevent, of course, a snapping attack, and other mechanisms um, to to prevent a, a snapping attack are special um, weak lines, so snap lines that are made for. Um, for for breaking so that when when the burglar tries to snap the lock it he will only get half of the lock um, snapped and the remaining part will still stay in the in the door and uh, protect it okay so now I will clamp it in a vise and try to pick it and uh, when I'm really good at picking this lock don't know how long this will take you will see a picking video I will tell you how long it took me to get to the state and then we'll take it apart and look inside. 
Okay, so this is the first attempt in the warm lock lab. Okay, let's start. Okay, five is binding now. <gasps> Got a full set, yeah, some progress now. Ooh. Okay, try again. It was the end of a very nice pick. I think I got it, but lost my full set. Got it back, I think it was four. Now I'm on two. lost everything. Okay, try again. Straight to number three. That's the first binder. Then four. Okay, try again. Three is the first binder. I think I got it. Okay, got a full set now. Pooh. I'm on two. Getting counter rotation. Okay, two again. Probably got it, but definitely lost the full set. hurting <sighs> carefully checking the pins don't want to mess it up maybe three has come back. Try to maintain the exact same tension. I think 
five is a little bit higher than before. Felt a little turn on the core, <gasps> and it's open. <sighs> I think that was almost two hours constantly picking on this devil. Okay, so now let's cut it. And I definitely want to avoid, oh shit, I only have 9 minutes left on the SD card. I definitely don't want to mess it up now. Yeah, should be fine like this. Nothing special here, as you can imagine, nothing special here. So now let's have a look at the pins. Nice spools in 1 and 2, 3, 4 and 5 are standard. All key pins are standard. Bidding is actually not too crazy. Ah, it's not too bad with a long in 4 and a short in five and one is a little bit longer than three and two it's it's not a bad bidding but i don't know the precision in this lock and the uh, evil keyway and i don't know this lock was really yeah has pushed me to the limits all right so I hope you have enjoyed this, um, yeah, I don't know what to say, this adventure, and yeah, thanks for watching and happy picking, bye bye. Okay, it's on the other day, and yeah, I'm not really proud of having needed two hours of getting this lock picked open, but I want to show you and explain my trouble that I had with this lock and why it was so difficult for me. Um, first, yeah, it's a BKS by the way. Um, this lock is a has a very paracentric keyway, which means that there is no straight line from from the end of this keyway to the pins. So we have this this warding here, this piece of warding, and when you want to access the pins from the end of this keyway, you need to get get in. With an, in an angle, and you can use the little hole in this piece of warding and the little hole in that piece of warding to get uh, the pins uh, uh, set, but uh, you need to have a very thin and flexible pick, and you cannot apply a lot of force to the pins. And I want to show you how this looks like in the repopulated plug that I have. So let's focus only on pins um, 4 and 5. I need to adjust the lightning a little bit. So you can see 4 is no problem and 5, five is also no problem. Um, but as I said it's a very thin pick. It's, I think it's 0.4 millimeters or 0.38 millimeters and so you cannot apply a lot of force to the pins and as this lock um, appears to be 
made with a good uh, amount of precision, I needed to apply a lot of uh, tension on the block to get the pins uh, bind. And so uh, this pick was just not uh, strong enough. And you have seen me uh, breaking uh, the Sparrow's uh, hook, which has a, had about the same uh, profile. It's a little bit thinner here on the shaft, uh, the Sparrow's. Yeah, um, that's, that's one possibility, and it didn't work for me. And the other possibility is to use uh, the hole in, in this piece of warding here, and to and to get in uh, to with a uh, very strong uh, pick. It's a south ord. Uh, maybe it's a point uh, six millimeter pick. Yeah, go in here in and uh, use this this deep hook to get the pins set. So push it just straight upwards, and let's see how how this works. Again, the first three I, I skip. And here I'm in at four. And it's five. And it's, yeah, it's, it's possible, but you easily overset four. And I also tried this technique, but yeah, I was not, not able to get this lock uh, picked uh, with that technique um, either. So let's move on to the, to the third technique that I used uh, that finally um, opened the lock for me. So I, I used this, uh, this deep hook or this, this hook from Sparrows, which is, uh, I believe, again, uh, 0.6 millimeter uh, hook and I go in at an angle like so and then turn it around and then I get all the, the height I need to get the pins set but as I don't need to go in um, at that um, at that edge as I can go in at an angle I don't um, um, take the risk to, to overset the pins on my way back so I can slide it in without any trouble. You can see I can slide it in without uh, interfering with the pins at all. And then I have to turn it and then I can get access to the pins individually. That's the last pin. And as this is a very thick pick um, I can apply a lot of um, force to the pins. So that's a, a pretty good technique actually, but it's very exhausting. So when you um, imagine you apply a lot of tension on the plug to get the pins bind, um, you have to get the pins um, pushed upwards or downwards when you turn it the other way around. Um, and apply force while turning and pushing. So that's that's really hard. But that was the, the only technique that uh, opened up the, the lock for me. Yeah, so that's the trouble I had with this lock. And um, I believe when I um, had a better feeling for the pins um, with light tension, I could have used the other techniques as well. Uh, and I will continue trying. All right. So again, thanks for watching, happy picking and bye bye.